Okay, you can see here that I am in Windows XP uh, inside a virtual machine here just to show another way of packaging our application for uh, another operating system. So far, as far as desktops, we've shown cross-platform options as far as uh, wrapping our code. Uh, we haven't had to rewrite our code, just write some code uh, to package it in. Uh, we've done C++ and Python using both uh, Qt and uh, GTK. Uh, and um, uh, WebKit. And uh, these are great cross-platform. Uh, there are some issues, you know, you have to, with the C++, compile it, and you have to compile it for each operating system. You can cross-compile for Windows from Linux, uh, although it can be cumbersome, especially when you get into um, more and more packages like Qt. Uh, and with Python, uh, you have to have Python installed, you got to have WebKit installed, you got to have your GTK or QT installed on that system, or make an installer that installs all that stuff. And even with the C++, there's still going to be libraries that you're going to have to distribute with your package. Here I'm going to show you a way where you can make your application um, act like a desktop application with stuff that's already on Windows machine. Uh, a plus to this is that you're good to go if you package it like this. Uh, and really right now we're wrapping it and then in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to package it as uh, an XQ. I'm going to show you a few different ways of doing that. Um, but right here you can see this is our application. I have it running in Chrome right now. Uh, I can search. By the way, this is a series. Be sure to, if you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, click on the annotation on the screen. We'll bring you to the playlist. And in the first video, we uh, made this little web app that uh, basically just searches through this list when you type something in the search bar there. Here I have it running in the browser, and that's great. It will run on any operating system with a modern browser. Uh, you can also see it's running in Chrome there, but I can right-click it here and open it with Internet Explorer. Um, I mainly use, uh, I mainly use, I never really use Windows other than uh, for testing out applications I write. Um, and so that's why I have Windows in a virtual box is mainly for doing this sort of thing. Opening up here in Internet Explorer, um, basically I said that because uh, you're going to notice I'm running an older version of Internet Explorer, which is going to make the uh, application actually look a little different. I think that's why it looks a little different in this case. But when I go to open it up in Internet Explorer, first off, I'm running it on a local machine and it warns me that I'm trying to activate, in this case, it's JavaScripts from the local machine. I'm going to click Allow the Block Content click yes, then we get our application. You can see it looks a little different, even though it is the same program. And you also have all your Internet Explorer bars, and some people will have a lot more than just what's set up here. So it's not very application program desktop feel to it in either sense. So we want to make it so that we just have this in a window without all the other mess. Um, and the way we're going to do that in this tutorial using HTA. Now you can do a similar thing with Visual Basic Script. Um, I'm not going to really go over that, but basically the same concept. Um, I think this using an HTA file actually makes it a little more customizable as far as how the window looks. Um, either case, I think that it will use whatever your uh, Internet Explorer you have installed on your machine. So whether you're using HTA files or Visual Basic scripts, it's going to render it using Internet Explorer. So make sure your code works with Internet Explorer, um, which is probably the hardest browser to get things working with. But in this case, working with jQuery and jQuery Mobile and everything should be compatible. Um, so let's jump right in. Let me I delete that. I don't need that because I'm about to create that. So once again, Here's our application. Also, another good thing about doing it this way with the HTA files, you don't get those warnings like we did when we opened it in Internet Explorer, all that. Because you're trying to make an application for someone, a program for someone, and you get that every time, they're going to be like, oh, no, should I click OK? What's that bar? Um, so I'm going to take my index HTML file here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. You could just rename it, but I'm saving the original. I'll call it index.hta, which stands for uh, HTML application. Ask, are you sure you want to change it? Yes. And now it gives it an icon uh, that looks pretty much like a default EXE icon on Windows, which is a little more application-like. But as I said in the future tutorial, we're going to package all this into an EXE file, and in which case you could change the icon in s depending on what technique you use. Anyway, I can click this now, and you can see just by changing my HTML to an HTA file, it now opens up in its own little window. 
It uh, has a scroll bar, everything works. I can type up here to search. But it doesn't have all the extra toolbars. You didn't get the warnings that you would get with Internet Explorer. Um, and right there off the bat, boom, you got what looks like an application. The title bar is what the title of the HTML file, or in this case, HTA file is. Um, but you have a lot more options uh, when you're working with these HTA files. So let me minimize that and go here. Uh, if you just do a quick Google search for HTA, uh, this is probably the first page that comes up. It's Microsoft's page on HTA. And right off the bat, you can see here is something you can put in the header of the HTA file. Um, and I'm just going to copy the entire thing right there. Basically, it's just got some op options here. Border none, caption no, you can set an icon, you can s tell, do you want to show up in the taskbar? No. Uh, how many instances, like if, well, we'll go over all this in a second. So let me um, go in here. I'm going to edit this using um, Notepad++, because if I actually open it up in regular Notepad, uh, it's going to look, it's all going to be on one line because I created it in Linux, and so the end line characters are different. But a Notepad++ is a free open source application, uh, and it's, it's, very good if you're stuck with Windows. So inside our header tag here, I am going to paste the stuff I just copied from the Microsoft website. So these are just a few of the options. If I just do that and save this and I go back and I click my HTA file, we get a full screen application. It takes up the full screen. We got our scroll bar on the side. We don't see our toolbar at the bottom. So if you wanted to make your um, web app uh, run as a local full screen application, that's how you do it. We can close this by hitting Alt F4 like you would with uh, most applications. Uh, I have also found, I'm pretty sure, it's been a while since I've done this, but JavaScript has, I think it's JavaScript, has an option to close current window. And if you put that into your HTML file or HTA file as a button, you can close the window with that button. So even though we don't have our toolbar uh, at the top of our window, we can make our own uh, close button and basically make our own little toolbar at the top of our application if we want. Let's go into uh, our our little HTA file here. I'll remove this window state maximized. Uh, you can have options like minimized uh, if you want it to start off minimized. Um, so I'll remove that line, save it, run it again, and this time it opens up uh, and the screen here. And once again, we have no border because we set to have no border because we have a lot of options set in here. Um, but it's not full screen anymore. Let's look at some of the other options here. Uh, system menu. We'll uh, remove that one in a minute. Single instance. So um, here it says yes. So what basically what that means is if I click this to open it and it's already opened and I go to click it again, instead of opening a new instance, it's just going to bring up the instance that's already open. So if you don't want the person to open up more than one uh, instance of your application, we will set that setting of uh, single instance to yes. You can set to no or remove that line. Now if I save it and run it and then run it again, you can see I have two instances of it running. Once again, Alt F4 to close each of those. Um, another option here uh, is the icon, which we'll get to in a minute because we're not seeing our border or actually our taskbar here. Uh, so we're uh, not seeing our icon. Here we have border set to none. Uh, let me remove that line, save it, and run it again. And now you'll see we still don't have a taskbar, but you can actually see a border around the window, so you can now resize it, and you have that border. That's one of the advantages, I think, to HTA. I could not figure out how to remove this border using uh, Visual Basic script. Um, so it's nice sometimes if you don't want that border uh, to remove it, you have to use HTA as far as I know. If anyone knows otherwise, you can let me know. Alt F4 again to close it. Now that we have a border, we can also remove this um, system menu, which is your default little menu at the top. Uh, so I'll remove that, run it. Oh, I'm mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure what system menu was. Oh, caption. Caption is actually what I was thinking of, I think. We'll see. Remove the caption, save it, run it again. And there, now we're back to having our application with the little toolbar here. Uh, little caption bar, I guess, uh, according to the HTA, where they can have buttons to maximize, minimize, and X to close. Still have this other instance open. I can Alt F4 to close that. Now that we have our toolbar, uh, or our, our taskbar there at the top, 
uh, I can uh, go in here. You can see I downloaded an icon. It's a. It's got to be an ICO file. I tried it with a PNG. It did not work. Could have been due to the size because it was larger, but I think it has to be an ICO file, an icon file, um, which you can create with GIMP. Um, I, of just tux here. So I'm going to go in here. It's in the current folder, so I can just say here tux.ico save. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if it changed the icon here. It doesn't. But when we run our application, you can see up here right next to the title, it's the little icon of Tux. Uh, so that's just a quick look at HTA files. Once again, I know most of my viewers are not Windows users, but if you want to quickly make an application for Windows and you want to use HTML, HTML5, CSS with some JavaScript um, in it, uh, and make it seem like a application, this is one way of doing it. And in uh, future tutorials in this series, we'll see how to make those into executables. I can think of two ways off the top of my head that are, are simple to do. Um, but before we uh, finish the tutorial, I did want to show you something else. Now, uh, this is yeah, it's saying error loading page because it's trying to load uh, uh, something that isn't there. Um, Here's another HTA file. Let me open that up in Notepad++. And in fact, I'm going to remove this head part first, just to give you an example. So let's say we had that program we were just running, and when you clicked on something, it linked to something else using uh, uh, H, uh, hyperlink reference. Um, so in this class case, uh, index.html, uh, which is inside the same folder right here. It's our original uh, file. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, that's this file. Let me make sure I have this saved. If I open this up, obviously it's just the word test, and when you click it, it opens it up in Internet Explorer, opens up the link in Internet Explorer. Obviously, in most cases, you're not going to want that. You're going to want a link to within what you're working with. So another option we can put in the head of our uh, HTA file here, just like we had all the other options, was navigatable, Yes, that means it will navigate within our application. So let me close that. Now that I have that saved and run it again, now when I click test, it opens up my application. And so you want to make sure you do that. Um, I should also, I believe, if I wanted to change this to HTTP. Uh, so filmsbychris.com, save that reopen it. Now when I click this, hopefully, there we go. It opens up my website. So if your application has more than one page and it's going to be linking to external or local uh, HTML files, uh, any, any URL links, you want to make sure that you set navigatable equal to yes. Otherwise, it will open it up in a separate Internet Explorer window. Um, that's all I have to show about the HTA files in this tutorial. Uh, once again, I know most of my viewers aren't Windows users, but you should know this stuff in case you want to quickly take your application and uh, very simply, like you saw, just taking our original HTML file and renaming it .hta gave us a basic window like this. Um, so, and it gives it that application feel, not that web page, web application feel. So I thank you for watching. Uh, visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should link, be a link in the description. Uh, if you have questions, please visit my site and go to the IRC link. Uh, join us in the IRC channel. It's uh, on Freenode, uh, pound Films by Chris. Once again, Chris with a K. Um, try to avoid asking technical questions in the comments below. Uh, good chance they won't get answered. Uh, the good chance they probably won't even be seen by me because I get a lot of comments. Um, also, uh, feel free to comment below. Let me know you like these tutorials. Give thumbs up uh, if you're liking this series on packaging applications for different operating systems. So once again, thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.